Britt Hume has been in Washington a long time. That's why he's Fox's senior political analyst, and he joins us now for some perspective. Is this a death penalty offense, do you think? Oh, I think not, but I do think it, it does certainly suggest a willingness on the part of some of those associated with Trump, particularly his younger son, to collude with Russia if someone from Russia had information from the Russian government, as the email suggested, that would be damaging to Hillary Clinton. Is receiving information the same as colluding? Well, it, it could be so construed, but the point is, the problem with the whole scenario about collusion uh, being suggested by this is that apparently no information was exchanged, no information was obtained. So if you even were to take the negative interpretation to say this showed a willingness to collude, the collusion didn't occur, at least so far as we know. Now, if it later turns out down the road that out of this meeting, unbeknownst to, to or at least uh, things turn out that we haven't heard about that suggest that something did come of it and that information was provided and it was provided courtesy of the Kremlin, that would be a different matter entirely. But so far, we don't have that. What we have so far is a meeting that apparently went nowhere. It suggests a certain level of... Um, naivete at, be, at least on the part of young Mr. Trump who should have known if he gets an approach that appears to be from the Putin government that he probably ought to be careful about taking the meeting and wouldn't you love Tucker to hear what Paul uh, uh, the campaign manager has to say Manafort. Paul Manafort has to say about this he was in the meeting and the Russian lawyer described him now Jared Kushner was there too apparently he got up after seven minutes and left right and, and Manafort is described as having sat there on his telephone the whole time and paying no attention. But nonetheless, he's, a, he's been around a long time. Uh, he's been on a lot of campaigns. He would know that what might be an approach from a foreign government was something you have to be careful with, which apparently young Mr. Trump didn't realize. What's so interesting to me, though, and as a lifelong resident of Washington, maybe you can vouch for this perception, there's a lot of foreign influence on U.S. government policy going on in Washington all the time. I, everyone I know is taking money from a foreign right. government, it seems like. And Russia's not on the top ten list of governments that influence our policy. No, I think, the, the, yeah, that, but that's not, not quite the issue. Obviously, the ambassadors from nations all over the world are here, as we are in their countries, for the purposes of, of protecting our interests and thereby affecting the policies of those governments. The Russian ambassador has been a man about town in Washington for as long as I can remember, whoever he might have been. And Sergei, Sergei Kislyak, who is the one with who, whom some of the Trump people had some meetings, um, was certainly in that vein. I saw him, as I, you may have heard me say to you, I saw I, last time I was in the Senate dining room, he was having lunch in there with Dianne Feinstein, and they were discussing who knows what. I never thought twice about it, and nor would anyone else. So contacts are one thing, and they're not by themselves illegitimate. But when someone acting during a presidential campaign on behalf of a foreign government seeking apparently to help one candidate against another uh, and to influence the campaign in that direction, that is something we have to be concerned about. Uh, the, the thing is, it doesn't appear to have come to anything. What's so striking, though, is the Trump campaign clearly believed, and the Russian lawyer and her publicist, Goldstone, in England, were hoping the Trump campaign would believe that the Hillary campaign was colluding with Russia. It does seem like both sides thought the same thing of the other. Of the other, yeah, that's, that's, that's one of the amusing ironies of this whole thing, that each side thought the other was guilty of of playing patty cake with the with Russian interest. Is there an investigation into whether or not the Hillary people were indeed colluding with the Russian government? Well, who knows? <laughs> um, <laughs> Good because point. what such investigations as are going on inside the Justice Department, headed by Mr. Mueller, are going whatever direction he chooses to take them. Um, we have no evidence so far that, that any alleged Hillary Clinton campaign collusion with the Russians is a piece of it, but who knows? You know it would be so fun, since we're on this topic, in this vein and we're all on the lookout for agent provocateurs from foreign countries is to kind of get forensic about what American policies are influenced by foreign governments, what kind of money changes hands in Washington, how many people are lobbying on behalf of foreign interests, registered or not, legally or not. There's a lot of that. Well, there is. And I, look, I've, I'm one of the people in this town who have come to take a somewhat a contrarian view about lobbying. Lobbyists are universally denounced by everybody. Yes. Lobbying is a constitutionally protected practice. It is, it is seeking redress of grievances, right? Yes. A petition for the government for redress of grievances. And if we didn't have a government that reached into every corner of American life and every nook and cranny of, of people's lives, we wouldn't have the, the squads of lobbyists that we have in this town. In a lot of cases, what lobbyists are here for is self-defense. In a lot of cases, what lobbyists are here for is to protect government subsidies that may be coming or other benefits that may be flowing to the entities that they represent. But it is a perfectly natural, constitutionally protected practice. And very often, when Congress is in one of its fits, uh, it is the lobbyists who know the territory and know how things are going to play out who save the day by warning them, if you go there, this is what's going to happen. So let's hear it for lobbyists, and to some extent, let's hear it for ambassadors. <laughs>
that is the contrarian view. brilliant, thank you. you bet, tucker.